24, Raphael Peterson. Number 20, George Moore. The Detroit Cooley Cardinals are the champions. Welcome to State Champions Podcast, where we discuss people, politics, community, and culture. And of course, with two great basketball minds and lovers of sports, we have to discuss sports on State Champions Podcast. Today, family and friends gather around and call a few folks because today's topic is much needed that we must discuss. Okay? Definitely. The emasculation of the black male. Uh-oh. I'm your co-captain, Raphael Peterson. To my left and to your right, my brother, my friend, George T. Ward Jr. How you doing today, brother George? Man, you know I'm good. How you doing today? Man, everything going outstanding. Now, we already said this. We was going to have some outstanding guests mm. on the show to follow up season one. Wow. So season two, we getting it going. And we have in the building none other mm. than Dr. Carl Taylor. How you doing? How you doing? I'm doing real good. Man, gee, that's, that's going to run down his accolades for everybody to know who he is and we'll shoot it back to him. Well, I- I think for me, I think it'll be a two-hour show. We started talking about all his accolades. Even okay. If just, even if we just rolled them down just one by one. But we're going to be brief. I think uh, the, the main title for this gentleman, um, he's the social scientist. Okay. I think okay. for us, when you start talking about, uh, he's an expert of sociology and, and historian. I always say he was a historian. So, okay. obviously, social scientist kind of falls up under that umbrella. But we're talking about Dr. Carlos Taylor. No, oh, okay. You got um, to get it. You got all the everything. Yeah, well, you know, Detroit Central alum. Okay. You know, it, it's a blessing to see someone with such mastery of not only education, scholastic mm-hmm. academia education, but of the streets. Mm-hmm. You know, so okay. As versatile as he is, you know, you're talking about if, if this was the hoop game, he pretty much could do it all. He'd be the Michael Jordan. He could handle it. He could shoot it. He could rebound that thing, and he could check. So he covers everything, uh, you know, but obviously, uh, former uh, professor at Michigan State yes, University. Sir. Yes, sir. Um, any anybody that went to Michigan State University, particularly from this city, mm-hmm. they talk finally of him. You know, I talked to Benny White, and Benny White said, "You got Dr. Taylor up there." And you know, it's crazy because you look at Benny White, and you know, yeah, he looked young, but you know, they're close to the same age. So, wow. you know, you talk about the bins that Dr. Taylor used to drive and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, just a wonderful man. But Dr. Taylor also, you know, he he was a bodyguard at one time. You know, people don't realize, wow. you know, he kind of protected the stones. And we ain't talking about the stones of the street. We're talking about the rolling stones. Wow. Uh, Willie Nelson. You know, I'm sure it was a lot of funny clouds on the air at that time. But Michael Jackson. <laughs> Damn. Uh, you know. Be and, Michael Jackson or like Michael Jackson on the east side? No, nah, not Michael Jackson from Sturdivant. Not Michael Jackson from oh, okay. Sturdivant okay. 12 okay. either. The okay. Michael Jackson. Okay. You know, okay. Gary, Indiana. Okay. Motown. All right. And, of course, the one and only uh, the hitman, uh, Tommy Hearns. So, again, we just, to, to have this gentleman out mm-hmm. is something that he really does not do. Mm-hmm. You know, he doesn't just travel around just for any and everybody. He he's such a legend that he can do his own thing. So again, we're just thankful to have him here. The one and only Dr. Carl Taylor. Dr. Carl Taylor, man, I gotta shake your hand, George. He all he's been telling me about you for many many years. Yeah. Man, just give it, give us some more insight of who you are and what you what you've done over the years. Well, I am blessed to be here, and oh. I want to <laughs> tell you I'm a big fan of this show. I saw it with Carlos and. Uh, the big guy from Henry Ford. Bernard mm-hmm. Hall. Yeah, mm-hmm. Bernard. And, uh, but I love the way you guys bring it, how you blend the education. That's what's important. The education, the street, mm-hmm. our life, culturally. Yes, sir. We're not backing away. So it's intelligence. And so me, I'm just a guy that was in, in the place. The city blessed me. And a lot of people had input into my life. Okay. I wouldn't be sitting here with all those folks and all those folks are not with degrees. Okay. There uh, you go. You understand? And uh-huh. so, oh, yes, sir. I have a dear, warm feeling. I have uh, with me today who is my uh, editor uh, and who's an educator, uh, a master teacher. Okay. Janice Raleigh. Um, we're doing a lot of things and I just been along the way. Just learn a little progress, get knocked down, get back up. There you go. Uh, Detroit is my native land. And uh-huh. I'm very proud of that. And there I you won't go. shrink from that at all. Wow. Okay. Oh man, this I'm telling you, G, it's gonna be an outstanding show. But before we get started, we gotta make sure people out there, make sure y'all go subscribe to our YouTube channel, State Champions Podcast. Win some cool SCP gear, some mm-hmm. prizes, some gift cards. Make sure you follow us on IG as well. Drop us an email at statechampionspodcast88 at gmail.com. If you have any show ideas, anything you want us to talk about, hit us up and let us know. Let me let, let y'all know this episode is sponsored by.
This episode is sponsored by Safe Cities, working together to create safe communities that flourish. That's right. That is absolutely a thing. You must go check out, go to their website, safecities.com, and get more information on that. I think it's about time, G. I think you ready to go? What are we talking about, though? Oh, man, the emasculation, of, the emasculation of the black male, good brother. So, so Ralph, when, let's, let's, let's kind of preface this thing. Um, you know, for years, mm -hmm. you, and I, you know, obviously both of us being 51 years old, uh, being born in 1970, graduated in 1988, we have, we've seen a transformation, so to speak. No question. Um, within our own communities, with the masculinity or lack thereof oh, in, yeah. in our black males. Look, we can't hide from it anymore. We can't run from it. And again, this is all solution-based. Mm -hmm. So this isn't us attacking anyone or of course. downgrading anyone. And this isn't strictly, this isn't about sexuality. No, absolutely not. You know, this isn't about sexuality. We want, we want our community to understand that we're concerned. And absolutely. I, and I think we're concerned for our young women. We're concerned for our families, and without the proper leadership, we understand that there's, there is possible extinction on the horizon if we don't do something about it. So that's what this is all about. It's funny you said that, George. So when I think about the emasculation of black male, it makes me cringe. Because in my mind, anytime somebody does something intentionally to mm. harm a person, oh. it's absolutely wrong. So last night, of course, you know, I'm going to be doing a little research. Right. So I'm going to do me some research. Yeah. This goes far deep. It goes deep. So just think about this. The physical mistreatment and subjugation of Negro people during slavery. This goes back. Way back. Way back. And a, and a different but equal maliciously form of institutional racism is dead and is in the decades since the emancipation has systematically distorted mm. the psychological part of the black male's mind and the people in general. Wow. Check this out. Such that, as stated by Carter G. Woodson, I'm sure you're familiar with him. No question. The miseducation of the Negro. When you control a man's thinking, uh -oh. you do not have to worry about his actions. You do not have to tell him not to stand or go yonder. He will find his proper place and will stay in it. You do not need to send him back to the back door. He will go without being told. He'll and be in fact, automatically, if there's no back door, he will cut one out for his special benefit. Wow. Dr. Taylor, when you hear the phrase emasculation of black male, what do you think? Wow. Well, first of all, I was just sit here and listen to you guys. You've got to- <laughs> No, no. no. I think, no. Well, what I think of is uh, a behavior and a lack of leadership, a lack of confidence. Mm -hmm. And so you demonize it. Mm -hmm. And that um, I go back, uh, I'm not gonna say the exact age, but <laughs> when I came up, if you were acting a certain way, uh -huh. uh, that you were called the word, and people don't get excited, but sissy. That's mm -hmm. right. Sissy was not good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so it meant that you weren't pulling up your part. Okay. Right. And so you were acting. And now we know much better. We have a better balance. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. We're still saying the same thing. Mm -hmm. Don't act weak. That's there it. you go. That's saying. it. Mm -hmm. So we're not getting into the sexuality, but then there's certain things that some people... I think it's like a minstrel show. You know, you're clowning. There we go. And you in your advertisement, and they're suggesting uh, that you wear certain clothes and yes, you certain behavior. And some of these things we have to really put on the table and say, this has got to stop. Absolutely. Why are we doing this? Why are we doing and this? And I was talking with Coach earlier before the show. And he was speaking of, you know, the behavior and the responsibility of leadership. That's yes, what sir. you're talking about. Yes, sir. I Absolutely. start with oneself. Absolutely. So why would you do that? You mm -hmm. know, and, it, and then it goes beyond simply uh, acting like a sissy. What does that mean? Mm -hmm. What does that Again, mean? Again, it goes back to me. I, I've got cross sections of when I was coming up, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. I wasn't a Muslim, but we knew exactly what that meant in mm -hmm. the community. Yes, wow. sir. You stand up, your shoulders are back. Yeah. So they were after us, and so you didn't act like that. And then also a pimp. Mm -hmm. So it's a variety of things. And when coach talks about it, we're talking about your integrity. Yes, sir. Yourself. And we've lost our way. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So, uh -huh. gee, yes. when you think of the emasculation of the black male, give me something quick and brief on what you think. What, it, what does it mean to you when you think about that? Not understanding your responsibility as a male within the framework of the family and mm -hmm. your neighborhood. Okay. You know, for me, you know, obviously we grew up at a time where we were, we were still blessed where we still have role models in our own neighborhood that you could look at. So if you didn't, if you really didn't know mm -hmm. what a male 
was to do, okay. you had examples in front of you. Wow. So, and you had something that you could look for and you could strive to become. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I, I tell people all the time, you know, I cut my grass a certain way. There was a man, Mr. Rogers. I don't know if he's still alive to this day. I remember I saw his grass. The lines were at an angle. <laughs> no, I'm serious because I've been cutting uh -huh. grass. You know, my dad died when I was nine. So I was cutting grass. By the time I was 11 years old, I was cutting the grass. Uh -huh. And I remember I said I, I couldn't wait the night before to do it. But again, he gave me an example. And I saw some yeah. things that you were supposed to do, how you conducted yourself in the neighborhood. And when you were wrong. Mm -hmm. I remember those gentlemen telling me, hey, man, watch your damn mouth. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and, and I didn't offer any resistance to it because I understood that was a part of his responsibility as mm -hmm. a man. Mm -hmm. Now we don't see as many men, and sometimes our men, our men, the mute button have, has been allowed, we've, been, we've allowed the mute button to be hit oh, on yeah. our mouths. Of course. So we're not as vocal as we need to be. And I, I think when I grew up, when we grew up, you heard men, you heard the voice of men. When they spoke... They spoke real. They spoke with instruction, and they spoke with conviction. And I think now, so for me, hearing, you know, the emasculation of the black male, I think our young men don't understand the responsibility that they have within the framework of their families. And without the leadership of a male in the family, it, it's going to be doomed. And that's the sad part. It's funny you said that, George, because through this research that I did last night, this goes, this goes back, like I said, Atlantic slave trade and manhood. This was titled, I found this last night. The Atlantic slave trade, the Middle Passage, as it's sometimes called, became the process of emasculating African males en route to America. Daniel P. Black, in his book, Dismantling Black Manhood, describes it as the slave's initiation into a systematic degradation designed to swipe away his humanity and make him ready for the seller's block. Listen, now just think about this. It's still going on. It's really. still go absolutely. Mm -hmm. Stephanie Smallwood and her work, Saltwater Slavery, was an acute blow to both his sense of self and manhood for an African American male, and who prided himself on being able to, pr to protect his wife and family. No longer was he able to do that and function in his concept of what he should be doing. Now you think about this. If he could no longer function as a man, then how should he to function? Mm. And how, more importantly, who was he? Who was he? Start to think about that. It became so intense, though, G, and Dr. Taylor, that this psychological shift sometimes induced deep depression. Indeed. Psychosis, sometimes leading to death. Some men threw themselves from the ships, drowning themselves into the salt waters of the Atlantic Sea before they could be discovered by slaves and others. Mysteriously, it was said to their will, they willed themselves to death. Yeah. Man, come on. Jay, you, you just talked you talk about it. Go ahead. You know, well, you're making excellent points because I think also when you look at internalizing mm -hmm. a lot of young children, male and females, you have a male who's angry at the destruction of his self. Yes, sir. So he takes it out in sexual abuse, mm -hmm. whether it's a male or if you're in prison. Prison doesn't automatically mean that it has to be that way, mm -hmm. but it's a means of who's going to help you. So you turn the wrong way, you internalize it, you tear up yourself, you tear up your family. You don't even have a family. Mm -hmm. wow. So many of the women in our community, wow. in my mother's age, my dad passed when I was 13. Mm -hmm. But the responsibility remained that you stand up and be a Man. Man, you stand up and be a mm -hmm. leader. Yes, sir. So you don't pick on your little brother. You don't make your little brother do things that demean him. You build him up. Absolutely. And so that's what is very impressive right now when you're talking about this. And you're absolutely right. People don't even think about slaves killed themselves rather than to go into this behavior. And it was more than that because you're stripping a slave down to say you are nothing. Nothing. Yes. There we go. There you go. Nothing. Mm -hmm. But Dr. Taylor, I, I'm, I'm just I'm listening to you speak. You know, I'm, I'm thinking about, you mentioned when you were 13, your dad passed, and my, my father, who you knew, uh, passed when I was nine. You know, what kind, how do you think those examples of manhood helped you? And now that we don't have so many of them, how is it hurting us right now, especially our young people? Excellent question. Uh, you dig deep. You don't want to let the old man down. My father continuously said to me when I was younger that if something happens to me, mm. you're going to be 
the man of the house. Mm-hmm. He wasn't putting my mother down. No. He was simply saying, you have responsibility. There you and go. And sometimes that is not easy. Some no. brothers go out and end up doing things that they probably shouldn't do because mm-hmm. you still, you have the term, which is a great book, Man, Child, in the Promised Land. Yes. Okay. You, you're still, you, you and I both were still adolescents, but we were being a man. But for me, that meant I was not going to bring that ugliness home. To I wasn't going to bring shame because I was shame my father. And my mother supported me, and she made me a better man. And in a weird way, to me, my dad's passing made me a stronger man, not a weaker man. Mm. Listen, real quick, Ralph. Uh, it's, no, it's go nuts. ahead. It's nuts. it's nuts that Dr. Taylor said that, uh, you know, my father was big on instruction. And we grew up again at a time where every day, I mean, the way you ate, you know, I can, I can listen to my father when I'm three or four years old. Give me a stern look. Stop smacking. I can remember my father, if I walked a certain way, pick your feet up. And, and he was so stern and he was so firm. But I think the biggest lesson that he taught me was in his death. Mm-hmm. I understood on his deathbed, I'm at Beaumont Hospital. It's mm-hmm. 1979, just before 1980 when he passed. And, and he looks at me and he said, look, man, you make sure you take care of my mother. You take care of my wife. You take care of my sister. Wow. And I'm a nine-year-old boy. And I'm telling you, I, re- I remember it. That's months. pressure. Dr. Dr. That's Shapiro, pressure. Dr. Shapiro is standing next to me. And I'm sitting there. I'm looking in my father's eyes. And I'm knowing I probably could cry now because yeah. I couldn't cry then. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm looking at my man in the bed. And my man, I'm looking at his face right yes, now. Sir. And my man looking at me like, look, man, this is your responsibility to the family. This is what you got to do. Mm-hmm. He didn't ask me. He didn't say, hey, man, could you make sure? Yeah. He said, make sure you take care of my mother. Mm-hmm. Take care of my wife. You, give you take care of my sister. There you so go. So in his death, I understood the role. Right. And mm-hmm. I understood when my mother would tell me, and I, I tell people, I never heard, and I had two wonderful grandfathers. I had an outstanding father and a wonderful stepfather. Mm-hmm. And I never heard from either of them, you're not going to be a sissy, you're not going to be a pump. Mm-hmm. But my grandmothers yeah. and my mother yeah. Yeah. let me know, hey, my man. This ain't gonna happen. Wow. So when I when I, so when I look at the emasculation of the black male, sometimes we do it internally. Oh, this is go ahead. So sometimes when I see I see a, I saw a young man at a football game. I can say the game because I ain't got to mention the young man's name. I don't know. He was about four or five years old. I'm at the Mufford uh, Detroit King football game, and I see a young man come up, and the young fella has you know he got an earring in his ear. He's about four years old. Okay. He got some tight tight pants on, and he's switching. Mm-hmm. And I'm looking at his conversation. I'm looking at his, 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 the way he's moving and talking. Mm-hmm. And I'm looking at the family. And I'm looking at their interaction. And I can't lie to nobody. I'm boiling. Not about this young man's sexuality. Not about me thinking what he's going to become. But the fact that we're almost encouraging this behavior. Right. Yeah. So as I look at this young fellow, and I'm saying, see, my grandmother, my aunt, Marlis Ward, who's a, who's a central alum herself, they wouldn't have had it. My grandfather, my father wouldn't have had to speak to me and say anything because if I was just with my mother and grandmothers, they would have said, hey, man, you better get yourself together. So in so many words, you're talking about there's going to be a number of people that's going to make sure we raise this village the proper way. Come on, man. Absolutely. Okay. Come okay. on, man. Barbershop. Yeah. You go to the barbershop. You mm-hmm. sit there. You're learning how to be a strong man, a mm-hmm. strong leader. Mm-hmm. So you're in there acting weak. That's what it's about. You need your behavior, how you hold yourself. So I'm talking, I did this survey, and I'm talking to these young cats out at the uh, Oakland Mall, not Oakland Mall, the Somerset Mall. Okay. And the young brother was telling me, he says, I said, so what, what's up with you? You know, he said, well, we're tricky. So I said, talk to me. He said, well, I told you, I'm tricky. I'm like, no, man, just talk Tell to me. me. What does that mean? mean? So he said, well, why are you saying that to me? I said, because you're not strong. You're, you're playing. You're being silly. I need mm-hmm. you to be straightforward. I don't care about your sexuality. Mm-hmm. And let me tell you something. This is not new. Sexuality goes back to biblical times. There you go. I want you to stand up and take hold of your leadership of yourself and your family. Mm-hmm. That's what we're really talking about. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. absolutely. Wow. So, and it, it's, it's funny that you're saying this, George, because now it has become this situation where you cannot even speak to the black male, young black male, oh. with any authority. Oh. Now, oh. you talk about how your, your grandmother, oh. mother, oh. and auntie would stand up and say certain things. Mm-hmm. Now, to check you and put you in your place. Yeah. Now, if you say something against that today's Today? time, yeah. what are we seeing now with our women in terms of when we decide we're going to check our young black men for doing certain things? What are you seeing and what are you seeing, yeah. George? Doc, you lead the way on this. What are you seeing, Doc? What are you seeing? Well, I'm seeing a lot of excuses. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
I've seen uh, examples of uh, supporting negative behavior. Yes. A lot of times when it's violence against anyone, mm -hmm. or like you were talking earlier, Coach, where parents are supporting young boys and young girls when they're wrong because he's mine. We, mm. I went to Durfee. The teacher would tear us up, and uh, and and the parent would get you get it again. Absolutely. The Taylor brothers, me and my brother, we were community property. So there were expectations. Community that property. Stop, like that. Doc. Stop, Doc. This is going to be the, this is going to be the only time. This is the only time again that we're in a position to give you a directive. But right now, you stop, and I want you to restart because I want you to really thoroughly explain community property. What, what did you mean when uh -huh. you said you and Virgil, Carlos and Virgil? We talking about two legends growing up were community property. Specify what you mean by that, and so that the people we can got understand. Up in the morning. Left out the house, and Miss Wilson, who we weren't really fond of, said, look at me and said, <laughs> Carl, yes, ma'am, I got some things I want to put out on the curb here. Put down your school books and come and do it. I said, yes, ma'am. I didn't say no. I didn't say my mama has to say so. Mm -hmm. I went and got those things and did it. And then she said, okay, wow. thank you. And then she tried to give me a dollar, so I said, I can't take that. There you go. Wow. Did you, did you, I wanted that dollar. Yeah, you, you, need, no, you needed the dollar, I too. wanted that dollar. Yes, yeah. sir. And she said, no. Those were the expectations. Al, that's Virgil, mm -hmm. he's going to, we cursing. Mm -hmm. and, and all of a sudden, <laughs> his hand grabs me and pulls me to the side and takes me and said, Mama got to clean out that mouth. Drags mm -hmm. me down in the basement, take out some lava soap for those oh, who are old. Lava. Lava, we lava talked soap. about lava soap. Lava uh -huh. soap. Shrugged it in my mouth. Oh, man. Then take the hold and she said, Lord Jesus, help me. Wash out the baby's filthy mouth. I'm choking. I'm crying. I won't name the minister. It's a very big minister. This book. It's a childhood friend of mine. They washed our mouth out and set us out there. And the only thing we said is, you're not going to tell my mother. Because <laughs> <laughs> we so, knew what we were doing was wrong. And that was our leadership. We weren't having it. Mm -hmm. Now I got to have somebody snapping at me. And you don't say this to me and all that. And boy, what's wrong with you? Yeah. And they say what they want. In the barbershop, we had rules. That's what I'm saying. We were community property. Mm -hmm. We belonged to Raphael. Mm -hmm. yeah. We belonged to Coach. Yeah. And all we, we said, please, don't, don't tell my mother. Don't tell my I mother. Don't even mention my dad. Don't. Yeah. Man, no, don't mention that. No, don't. Don't tell dad. Yeah. So, so what, what you're talking about, one of the layers of this is our children no longer belong to the village. How did, uh, and, I, and briefly, we gotta, I got to ask this question, how did that shift? Why is it that all of a sudden we went from, again, it was funny because people didn't catch it early when you said, please don't tell my mother. You were getting your mouth washed out with soap by a person that wasn't a blood relative of yours. But they loved you enough. See, we don't know what love is oftentimes. Mm -hmm. We well, don't know what love is. A lot of people are squirming right now because they're going to talk about child abuse. Oh, yeah, no mm -hmm. question. But what I'm saying to no, you is that no we, uh, they, uh, there was a balance. Yeah, there were some mistakes. But overall, and I prove it every time at the university, I asked the class, well, all types of students, can I, if I was in Detroit and I was a school teacher, can I check your kid? Mm -hmm. And every year, and I, you know, I taught 40 years, every class would tell me, no. Raphael, wow. you cannot touch my kid. Mm -hmm. You call me, and then that don't work. Because mm -hmm. coaches gave me a good example. Then they come up, we're not, I, I got to teach these kids. I ain't got time to have a powwow about how you want me to treat your kid. I want to treat your kid right because I love your kid, but I'm about business. Yeah. So now I got every kid telling me no, mm -hmm. and what my mother said. And then I got a lawyer. Seriously, uh -huh. I got a lawyer. That's why I left the university. Wow. That's why you left the university. Yeah, I, I'm not hearing that. Yeah. I, I didn't come up that way. Mm -hmm. You know, something. You can't say that to me. You can't make me take my hat off. You can't make me do anything. I did. This has went too far. Mm -hmm. It's overkill now. Yeah. So you know, you understand. You don't respect anything. So they don't let anybody tell anything, and then you end up with the kid back in the basement because he or she can't work. Uh -huh. She can't follow instruction. Oh, absolutely. She makes no contributions. Wow. But she gonna tell you. So I tell you. I pick up the phone and call you. If I was teaching school now, come get your kid. Because mm -hmm. I'm not going to let your kid disrupt what we're doing here. Right. No, absolutely. Wow. So it's, it, I'm thinking about leadership and thinking about the black male. And we're talking about the emasculation of the black male. Mm -hmm. George, I told you this many times. Dr. Taylor, you might be familiar with this. I read this. It was a study. It became a study. Mm. It wasn't really a study. It was about yep. the African elephant. And what happened over on the continent of Africa, what ended up happening was the adult male elephants were being poached. Mm. 
for that ivory tusk. Absolutely. Right. On the black market, 10, 20,000, depending on how big it was. So the government came in, and what they did, they said, we have to save the elephants. They took the young males, the young females, and adult, and adult females, Female. mm -hmm. and they put them in a reserve to protect them because mm -hmm. they thought this was going to stop the killing of the elephants from the poachers. Well, three months in, mm -hmm. they went out and they saw that the elephants were still dying, and they was trying to figure it out. So the government said, it's somebody from the inside. We, they had to put up cameras. They had to put up cameras now to determine what happened. They put the cameras up, went mm -hmm. out, and what they saw was amazing. And this is what they discovered was amazing. That because they saw that the young males started roughhousing the young females, and when they got big enough, they started to roughhouse the mothers. The mothers. And they were killing them. Scientists concluded now, on now that because there was no dominant adult male elephant in place, the young males took over the whole continent. And they didn't understand their role. And they did not understand their role. So this is so when I listened, when I saw that, it was amazing to me. Years ago. I said, this is not this is not coincidental that the black man is being snuffed out in any form or any fashion, whether you go to prison, preach, whether, you sleep, preach, whether you go home, whatever they do. Whether they start to feminize the black male, oh. it doesn't make a difference what they do. Oh. When you're no longer strong as a leader, you're going to have young men mm -mm. who start to buck. Because once that testosterone come in, they're going to challenge everything. It's going to kick in. It's going to kick in. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, wow. You, I see this. The scientists concluded. This ain't mm -hmm. Raphael talking. This is, no. this is on paper now. Mm -hmm. Raphael is bringing it. That this is exactly right. So how, how, what can it's we do? It's out of order. It's mm -hmm. out, of order. out of order. And our ladies mm -mm. will not mm -mm. allow mm -mm. the black males to take mm -mm. their place. Now, if we go and do what we was taught for many years, you just go out and you take it. Yeah. That'll be wrong. It'll be crazy. Can't do it. But we have to come to some means and some understanding as a group and a culture of people, black male, black female. Hey, how do we fix this for our community, for our young men and young women, for our total development for years to come? Who's starting this one off? Well, when you say that, and again, this is this is kind of a little segue for our, our one of our shows in the next week or so. I always say it's the rabbit has the gun. Okay. And 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 now that our now that our, our our women are doing great with their careers, our men, you know, you you looked at a man. Your grandmother chose a man who could take care of her. Yeah, take care of her. Absolutely. Family. So we're talking about success. Success looked different from generation to generation. Oh, absolutely. So now success is based on what we see. It's all about material. But what was it back then, though, G? Success back then for our grandparents. For our parents and all of that, it was about the success of the family. So grandma had a smaller house, mm -hmm. had one bathroom, mm -hmm. you had a couple fans, and about fifteen people living in there. Oh, about at least tw at least twelve and a half. Yeah, <laughs> and a half was a rat. Or something. Yeah. <laughs> but but here we are though, right? Grandma made sure you were fed. Yep. She made sure you were respectful. Mm -hmm. You were mannerable. I am not suggesting that we become J.J. Michael Evans. That's yeah. not what I'm suggesting. I ain't uh -uh. saying go live in Cabrini Green. So, but I'm saying is there has to be some sort of balance. Mm -hmm. And until our women really as a whole, because it ain't all of them, yeah. appreciate their role and the males, because we talking about the males, appreciate their role. It's a shared leadership, though. It's there shared you go. leadership. There, this is a team shared concept. It's a shared leadership. It's a team concept. It's a team oh, concept. Yeah. But everybody now, everybody you know out here, our, our sisters talk. When they go to the dealership, no, they don't even have to ask. You know, it used to be a time, your mom got a new car. You know, dad kind of spearheaded that. Mm -hmm. Now they can go to the dealership after work, come home, mama got a new car. Yeah. She ain't cooked. Mm -hmm. She grabbed y'all something to eat. Mm -hmm. But our boys have watched women run everything. So now they've taken a step back subconsciously. So now for them, they don't understand that they're supposed to be the lead. They're supposed to be the heavy. They're supposed to be the ones. If it's a rainstorm, I always tell everybody, if it's a severe rainstorm, the father not supposed to beat everybody to the basement. Mm -hmm. That's not how that goes. So until we accept our role as men mm -hmm. and understand our role and what we're supposed to do and what this thing is supposed to look like, I don't know how we can get back there. Can because you share leadership, though? Got to have it. An honest question. Can you share leadership? Can you share leadership? Yeah, wow. Because that is not, that is not the mother 
that was when you and I came up. This is a more educated woman. That's right. She has a d- different demand. Uh-huh. And then we have to explain also what or how we're sharing this, opposed to George, you said, my dad, just you should look at us. He didn't have to say nothing. We knew Nothing's what was up. Oh. But that's different. Mama a lot could of women too. was running a, a lot of women were running everything. They did. But they knew how to play the game Come to on, make man. it look like Come on. dad was doing it. This Come is on. different today. And I think that it's very complex. And we need to sit down. Raphael, I love what you're leading with. It's about order. And you mm-hmm. cannot change order. No. That's it. Mm-hmm. Order has to be reevaluated, mm-hmm. reconstructed. Yes, sir. But order is still demanded. Mm-hmm. You still respect whoever you're talking to. Yes, yes, absolutely. Sir. What happened to the respect? I mean, I think Coach this morning gave a beautiful example. He's dealing with a much better than I am. I'm got older. I didn't understand this. I taught all these years, and then suddenly I got this parent telling me what and a lawyer. I'm like, <laughs> I mean, no, I am. I'm telling because I'm a university professor. I'm not going to sit here and listen to no lawyer. I know the law, so get on out of here. But that's what's coming. It keeps coming. Mm -hmm. We've got to get this resolved. This is not a place for you. We have to share the leadership, and the kid has to learn that the kid is no longer say, shut up because I told you so. Mm -hmm. You've got to understand, these are the parameters. And we have violated that. I'm Mm -hmm. just talking about overall. We're out of order. Mm -hmm. Out of order. When you talk about shared leadership, you know, when you talk about sharing anything, there's, there's a certain level of respect that's involved. Mm-hmm. It has to be. And I think a lot of our men oftentimes are damaged. Mm-hmm. A lot of our women have been damaged. And the, the daughter-father relationship is at the root of the lack of respect oftentimes for our men mm-hmm. and their role. So oftentimes, you know, where mom, like you said, our women always ran everything. Mm-hmm. You know, my, my dad didn't yeah, have this to say not, This is not dinner. a new phenomenon. Go ahead. I, I want to say one thing, Ruth. That's good. That this is probably, probably the most explosive thing I could say this morning. Mm. We're looking at, here in Detroit, we've had plenty of examples across America. And I'm just uh, talking about us now. That's uh-huh. right. We had a woman not that long ago that killed her. She's raising these children by two or three different fathers. Yes. And I, she killed her children. Michelle. And cut them up mm-hmm. and put them in the freezer. Absolutely. The King and so everybody's looking for her to have uh, sorrow. And uh, she showed a type of resentment and hatred towards men. What you t- I, and, I watched and, it live. Okay. Uh-huh. We have not talked about that. Mm-hmm. We have not talked about masculine females. Mm-hmm. We have not talked about these roles. Mm-hmm. And we, ha- we have to talk about them. And I got to say... Both of you, you guys are younger. I'm kind of sitting in the back because that's going to be a tough talk. Mm -hmm. Because this woman, how do you kill your children? Mm -hmm. I don't want to be judgmental, but if ever a time you killed your babies Mm -hmm. and you're still mad. And then she became even angrier when the fathers came in the physical presence of her in front of a judge. Yes, sir. She sure did. That that demon loose. Yes. That is not one occasion, gentlemen. No, it isn't. That is it. So you guys are very powerful. You got to put this out for this is a community mm-hmm. wow. discussion. Mm-hmm. You got to talk about her. Mm-hmm. How are you so bitter? And so some homes are teaching you don't need a man because a man ain't going to do nothing. Coach, I said to you, I put on Facebook and nobody said anything. Everybody was quiet. I had a young girl that I talked with Janice Riley, but a young girl and she's cute looking at everything. She said, well, you put the strap. Well, you put, she's talking about a rubber penis. Yeah. Everybody's quiet. Nobody's saying anything. Yeah. You must address this rubber penis. Mm-hmm. It's I, a, I'm not saying I got the cure, but you can't keep well, hiding. But so it's, go ahead, Ralph. So going to it's funny you said that about that 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 particular case and that young lady and how angry she is. So last night in this research, this is this is outstanding because it's amazing to me. So think about this, and I, and I'm and I'm tying it in. I don't know if I can actually no, do this, will. but I'm gonna see if I can. So when in this research, they talked about in slavery, the buck and the mm, stud, which absolutely. was us. Absolutely. And what slave masters did was take the big man. Yeah. That's right. And he went through all of and he had sexual relations that's with right. all the women, all the black women to create another stud yeah. male. Big dude. Could you imagine? The disdain a lady would have for that man if she saw him 12 months later and he didn't recognize her? So when you start to look at that, and this is, now think about this, George and Dr. Taylor. 
in our community, this is what goes on. Yeah. They go in. Sure. Yeah, they have some fun. They have some fun. Reproduce. And, and now the and I'm tying it to the the Michelle case, the her her being so angry and just by the man bouncing around for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. But I just thought about the stud and the and 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 the buck and how they did us. And now we were tied to our sexual proudness, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, yeah. How good are we? Yeah. But realistically, it never taught us to think about family, our sons, doing the things in the proper order. But because of what we were taught through our slave master, y'all are only good for one thing, yep. creating another, creating another buck. strong sure. buck. Well, the disdain that you talk about, Ralph, I want you to think about this. Um, your other mother, my mother, Eileen Ward, mm-hmm. Dr. Taylor's classmate, always talked about um, displaced anger. Yes. She always talked about displaced anger. She had an MSW from U of M, and I always said, Mama, you, we, we not in the classroom. <laughs> she said, no. Nah. Yes, we are. <laughs> this, yeah, we are. That's what and she always said. That. No, yeah, we are. Everything is to be taught. We Every day is a learning opportunity. Well, she talked about displaced anger, so this young lady, she wasn't just mad at, at, at right. those men, at those mm-hmm. fathers. She was mad at her own. Now, you can tell me whatever yeah. you want to. Mm-hmm. I don't know her. I don't know the situation. But there's a man or men somewhere that did her very wrong. And that anger, That's right. it was almost like I always say people are soaked in lighter fluid oftentimes. Mm-hmm. And when you strike that match, if them coals are so good and let them sit for a minute, it could be the smallest This bone. is where you guys are your strongest. I mean this. This is what has to be talked about. Mm-hmm. We have that to talk about it. Now. And you're doing it. What I'm saying is you're absolutely right. Because this young woman has been abused. Yes. The same thing. I got horror story after horror story, mm-hmm. and I'm a primary researcher, so I'm not in the ivory tower. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm the, when a, a woman mm-hmm. tells me she wakes up in the middle of the night and her boyfriend has her little niece on him and he's having sex with yep. her, and I'm saying, if, what in what world you don't get up and, and damn kill. near kill him kill mm-hmm. and take save you? She goes back to sleep. And later on, you know the story, we find the child half burned to death and it was all over drugs. Mm-hmm. All of this is intersections that you have to talk about. Mm-hmm. And you are the ones that bring us to the community table. This has this is education. Yes, this sir. is way this is championship, all right. Okay. Wow. All right. <laughs> okay. You wow. guys carry on. You got it. I'm happy I came here, but you gotta do this. Yes. Well, well, the discussions. You know, we, we talk about it all the time, our discussions that everyone does not want to have. Yeah. And, you know, since we've been friends, since we were 14 years old, we always kind of told the line a little bit. You know, we would challenge people. And I think now our community, let's wake up. Mm-hmm. Let's wake up. Let's let's not continue to act as if we don't see this. You know, when we go, you talk, you mentioned the barbershop earlier. And I go to Classic Effects right at Six Mile and Southfield. I just gave you a plug, Tom, and y'all need to send us something. <laughs> and in the barbershop, you know, it's funny, Doc, when the mother comes in with the son mm-hmm. and the boy at, at six or seven years old or three years old, he sits on the mama's lap and she holds him. I mean, he, tuck, he tucked on that breast much harder, much better than, her, than she had let the father do. And it's crazy. And this honest got truth. The barbershop looks at me. Cause they know I'm gonna say something. After what, sometimes I'm saying, well, you know what? I'm not gonna bring any every time. You don't need to say open your mouth, but go ahead. No, so, no, because again, we we're in a classroom every day, rap. Right? We gotta yeah, say something. True. So I will say something to the young fella. I say, man, get up, big fella. I'm gonna say it in a nice way. I'm not gonna say, yeah, man, get there your you go. Little there you go. I ain't gonna say, mama, that boy don't belong on you. But I'll say, big fella, get on up, man. Go sit over there, man. You need your own chair. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you see the mother grab them even tighter, mm-hmm. or they give me a look like, dang, I hadn't thought about that. So I think for us, we got to have conversations with our queens and say, look, oh, now, this yeah, absolutely. Go look, ahead. Look now, you, you say you don't like weak men. Mm-hmm. You say you hate a lazy, shiftless man. Well, I'll be damned. You, you raising, raising one. That's right. You raising, you raising one. So now, so now you raising one for another woman to have. How selfish is that? Because you love this little boy because he got wavy hair and, and he bow legged or whatever. He cute and he can play a little football or something. And you have fallen in love with him so tough. Yeah. But we must respect our institutions. What I'm saying is what you said is very true. However, in those barbershops, we used to not have to worry about that because yep. the vibe was so strong. Whoa. The rules was you come in there and the old barber might look and say, man, yeah. you'll be all right. Yeah, that's what he that's was exactly saying. What he was that's saying. exactly what he would he say. You'll be all right. But again, now you guys are going to have to bring women to the table with you 
to talk. Your queens are going to have to talk to their own and to you. They're not here. They're, their voice is over there. That's why they get distorted because yes, they're not I able understand. to have the feedback. You got your mother made a point of that. I might be telling you what you don't want to hear, but you're going to hear it. Yeah. And when you lose that person, you two do that with each other. When you lose that perspective, that's how we've gotten in the shape we in. Because we don't have anybody to tell us, that's wrong, I don't care what you do. So you were saying this, Dr. Taylor, you said, is it possible for shared leadership? That is a great question because I, 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 the team concept is what it is. You have to have it, but... In different areas, somebody's going to have to take the lead, but somebody's going to have to make that final decision. That's right. And I, and based upon what I was reading and, we, and we had a tug of war, we understood we had a tug of war for many many years. The final decision was put at the place of the male. Mm -hmm. Order when you shift this paradigm now, mm -mm. and now. And don't get me wrong, ladies, outstanding, can Amazing. lead, can do oh, outstanding no things. No but we have to look at what was working for black families. It was a Ooh. study, and I think it was in the 50s, if I remember correctly. I think it was done by Senator um, the Manahan Report. The Manahan. Manahan, 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 Manahan there you the go. White there you go. He's an Irishman. There he you said, go. Talk about that. the threat of the black family oh, is going to be dead because of the black male. There you but go. He didn't say that it's the same thing true of the Irish family, but they used us. Yes. But Come the on. fact is that you still got to talk about that. You're correct. So we just gave in and we allow every politician, every policy yes. to condemn the black man Rub him out, kill him. Claudine, the great Don. Claudine. Dining, that movie is, says it all. Oh, wow. Jesus, you know, mm -hmm. the invisible uh -huh. man and all these things. You guys are brainy. You have the tools. Use them. Wow. What you're saying is it's going to be painful because we haven't done it. Wow. We allowed us to make a transformation that's not true. So while Monningham is saying that, let me finish this one. Mm -hmm. he said no, we that, waiting. We waiting. No, we talk so look, look. <laughs> who's, the, who's, the, who's, the, who's the daddy of the nation? You have a president who says, let me walk up and grab that P, yeah. P word. That you can do anything this white man, as long as you make me money. And so was well, that a pimp or what? But when the black guy doesn't lock him up, he's no good, he's worthless. Mm -hmm. So Raphael, you're driving it home. You're driving it home. You got to have a compromise. And I'm not saying it's going to be easy, mm -hmm. but you've got to say what happened to us. And it was what you're saying all along. This was planned. This is planned, man. This is not an accident. This is not an accident. And it, it just, for me, it's just like, yo, do y'all see what's going on? You have to see it. But if you don't do research, you're not going to know. Because if you forget about the past, I can promise That's you, right. your future is in danger. But my, but so my question is, and knowing that, and again, yep, this has been planned. But we know that. Those, once we present it to them, how do we change their way of thinking? How can we say, <laughs> hey, because the abnormal has become the norm. Mm-hmm. And the norm has become the abnormal. Right. So now you got to understand something. People have looked at each of your children, mm -hmm. all of them. Mm -hmm. And at one point it said, Man, your daddy crazy. <laughs> no, no, listen to what I'm saying. Now, now listen, no, I'm sure you yeah. haven't, you didn't go up in CMA. You haven't gone up in Flicks. You didn't go to Eastern Michigan. You didn't go to Cass where Brooke, Brooke went to school and just whooped your children, any of that. None of that. You have had firm, fair, consistent rules yeah. that you had to follow. That's it. Unfortunately, now, I, I remember, man, telling my son sometimes, say, all right, man, let's here, go cut the back and make sure you go clean our shower and blah, blah, blah. And I would see his friends laugh sometimes. And I would ask him, what the hell is so damn funny? But I watched it. None of them really, and again, they have chores, but it wasn't responsibilities. I always say, I never use the term chore in my house. I said, no, it's your job, dog. You got to own it. Education yeah. hurt us, though. Education hurt us. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Oh, you go. Okay. You go. I'm done well, talking. Say, we, we, the mute button been hit on we, me. We, we made a transformation. Let's be honest. My generation did. We went in. A couple of things we stopped doing, like we, the old way. We're the ones, my generation began to go another way. In other words, like, well, he don't have to do that, or he doesn't have to not, not be so harsh. And yes. we made excuses, and we started saying, because why? Because you have this good education. Good education should not 
make other things not stand. Mm -hmm. So discipline stands. Discipline has to stand. It has to stand. So, you know, what, what I'm saying is that Woody Hayes is dead. Or Bo Schimbeckler is dead. Mm -hmm. You talk about the coaching. You improvise, you change, but you stick with the principle. We don't have principle. Where's your honor, Rafael? That's what you guys are saying. Bo, mm -hmm. where's your honor? I don't know you. This is the first time I've met you. I'm feeling you. This is a brother that has honor. <laughs> honor is important. I know George. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Honor. You tell these kids, I tell the kid the other day, I said, you know, Negro, you can't work for me. Why not, Doc? Because I, I did. I said, you ain't got no honor, nigga. I said, what? He laughed. Mm -hmm. Because it didn't mean anything. But if you said that to me, oh, man. If, if, if I walked in here right now and Raphael, you turned mm -hmm. and looked and you said, yeah, Doc, cool, but, you know, that nigga ain't got no honor. I, what did you say? Mm -hmm. I'd be ready to thump with you almost because that that's something. important mm -hmm. because I'm representing something. Yes, sir. So we've lost our way because we've allowed it. Yeah. We've it's lost not going to be physical. Mm -hmm. We've lost our way. And uh, I want you to think about this. We, we look at the world through the lens of our women now, Doc. Mm -hmm. Now, see, you just said, you know, honor. Like that, I, I ain't trying to be funny. Those may be fighting words for me. Now, hold on, dog. What you mean? I ain't got no honor. Right. I, that has to mean something. But again, I'm looking at the world through the lens of George Theophilus Ward Sr. I'm looking at the, I'm looking at the world through the eyes of Raymond Miles Sr. I'm looking at the world through my grandfather's. So when you say that, that means something. But I want you to think about this. You just mentioned education, and it was the it was the forbidden fruit at one time. So yep, and now we started getting education, and it was almost like okay, we got it, and we were good. Too often, and I tell my wife this all the time. You know, and she said, well, you know, all the, the lowest GPA in my household and all of our children went to schools of choice. The lowest GPA was about a 3-3. Three, three. And I would tell her, I said, well, look, we can't gauge our children on their report cards. Mm -hmm. I want you to understand that. I, 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 I think they should get good report cards. They got Wi-Fi, uh, lights. They got everything they need. Good mm -hmm. food, everything, clothes. So why wouldn't they get good grades? So now let's gauge them on something else. Let's gauge our boys on the honor. Let's gauge them on, are you doing what you're told to do? Are you, as you get older, taking initiative? See, it's far too often that our boys get to put the cart before the horse. Y'all talked about order. So we allow our boys to start having sex, and we know they're having yes. sex. Our children have to start having yes. sex. So we're talking about masculinity. We're talking about how do they become feminine, so to speak. So again, we ain't talking about sexuality. I always tell people, I say, hold on, man. You don't get to go out here and lay with a girl, get on top of a girl, or whatever it is you're doing with her, and then you come home and you see the garbage needs to be taken out and you don't do it. Mm -hmm. See, for me, that's not understanding your role within the household. You can't become grown on this end, and then you come home and you back a child again. We can't continue to allow that because, again, it gives them a false sense of reality because they don't know, our young boys do not know and understand or own their role within our households. And it's the most damaging thing that I've ever seen, man. Man, I want to say this, because I definitely got to bring this up. Dr. Francis Welsing stated in the ISIS papers, uh -oh. racism, white supremacy will have black men parading around in dresses mm -hmm. in 40 years. That was wrote back in the right. 70s. Well, and when you look at society, and I think about Dave Chappelle and how they talked about they wanted him to put on a dress. Why is it so important for America to see a black man in a dress? It's, it's baffling to me in my mm. mind. Mm. Why is that necessary? But what I started to think about, George, you know, a lot of people know I do construction work. Mm -hmm. And any time, if I wanted to tear down a building, yep. all I have to do uh -oh. is go find... Uh -oh. Where that main support yeah. structure is. Main support structure. Once I find that main support structure, I don't care what's, what else is around it. So you ain't saying taking out the center block that's by nope, the nope, 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 nope. We go okay. get that main support beam. Okay. And once we get that main support beam and pull it out, mm -hmm. I can promise you it's going to fall. And what I'm saying is what has happened in America to our men uh -oh. in the all main, forms and all fashion, the whether they took them beam. out and sent them to prison, whether they put them in dresses or whatever they did, feminizing the black male. Once you take out that main support structure, the community has fallen. Right now, you can't tell me no urban community in the United States of America that is that that, that, that does not have that element of big time violence. Oh, yeah. And who's leading the way? Our black males. Our black males. 
Absolutely. So that leadership and that order, self hatred, safe self hatred, self hatred. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's uh, that's infusing yeah. racism, white supremacy. Yeah. If you want to go read something and listen to something, people, go look at the ISIS paper, Dr. Francis Welsing. It is the most amazing research that you ever want to see. She's a forefront researcher on that. Her and a guy named Neely Fuller, they talked about different things. Outstanding people. But if you want to see it and if we really want to bring something back and come to the table, black men, black women, to fix our community, like Dr. Taylor is saying, we have to do it because this is a necessity. We have to lead together, and but we cannot get away from that one word. That one word that starts with a D is, and that's discipline. Yeah, that's right. And if you don't have no discipline, you don't have nothing. Well, it's going to take some sacrifice. It's got to take some sacrifice. It's going to take, it's going to take sacrifice. And I think I want, before I say what I have to say, I want Dr. Taylor to talk to us about what that sacrifice is going to look like. Mm-hmm. Because you are, again, you are the scientist, the social scientist. I don't know if I'm the, but I would say this, that you're right. Sacrifice is very painful, though. Mm-hmm. We're in a society that says you don't have to. You know, we're looking at a larger society that tries to control us through technology. So sacrifice is real easy. My, wow. A lot of people in the neighborhoods where we came up, the daddies worked in the plant. They drove a hoopty to work. They drove their good car on Sundays. They got an allowance. Kids. Got an allowance from yeah. the wife. Yeah, right. For and, coffee and, and, and the newspaper. Went up to, but they made sacrifices. If you love somebody, you make a sacrifice. The same thing with your children. But all of that's disappeared. So a sacrifice means I'm willing to do this. You guys are making a sacrifice right now. Mm-hmm. Everybody has to make yep. a sacrifice. Right. And that's what people are not willing to do. Mm-hmm. They want wow. their cake and eat it too. They want to be the Michelob girl. They want to be fine, and they want to have the big ride. They want to have the gorgeous house. Mm-hmm. They want to have somebody cook for them. Seriously, they tripping. They smelling themselves. They smelling themselves. Well, I, I think I want you to think about this. We talk about emasculation, and I, I really want Doc also to kind of intro his book. He can tap into it real quick. I want the people to see this, really understand how deep <laughs> how deep this book is. I want Doc to talk about his book real quickly. Um, but I want to think, I want everybody to think about this and how this has been done Mm -hmm. very, very methodically and purposely. When I look at stars, Mm -hmm. I look at how they illuminate when our men have on dresses. Right. I want you to think about some of our shows. And again, we're not, this is, this ain't about uh, sexuality, but for whatever reason, every time we look up, when we're looking at men in dresses, they illuminate the black male. Mm-hmm. So when so when some of these rappers come to award shows, and they looking like their mothers or their sisters, they 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 put it on the internet so quick, and this has been done by design because they know for whatever reason again it's part of the forbidden fruit we are the most faddish people in the world so whatever trend is going on oh we're gonna adopt it mm-hmm. and we're gonna adopt it to the fullest so they continue to put us in women wear. They continue to allow us or encourage us. That's the one thing that I don't like is the encouraging of, yep, we have had some guys that acted feminine from the time, from the beginning of time. Mm -hmm. But now this has been encouraged with our young people. So you telling me when I was in the sixth grade, boy, don't be feeling on that girl booty. Boy, you better stop that. Now you telling me that you can tell a fourth grader he can become gay. Well, wait a minute now. You couldn't encourage my masculinity or heterosexuality when I'm in middle school, but now you're encouraging homosexuality to a boy that has no idea about anything other than what we show. So you're saying he could be a, they give him an opportunity to be a princess before he can be a prince. Before he even become a prince. He can't pick his bedtime, but he can He can't pick, pick his, his bedtime, but he can pick who he has. Okay. But so sex, right. so sex for us wasn't encouraged. You were taught, dog, you ain't supposed to do that. But now you telling me you can like a boy? Are you kidding me? And then I'm the bad guy because I'm father enough to say, you bet not. Yeah. So I'm father enough to say, no, we ain't doing that. And I look at it and I watch some of, I ain't going to say his name, but he's allowed his wife to almost become his husband. But I watch and I'm watching what they're doing with his, with his son that became a daughter. But it's almost like we've ignored his other children. We don't take pictures of his other children. Man. Every time you look up, I'm looking at it and I'm saying, well, why they keep showing them? And then here's another thing, George, with, with all of that. And I know we got to wrap up. 
as soon as you say something about they want to cancel culture because yeah. you said yeah. certain things. Yeah, they're going to try to shut us down. I have not heard one time nope. nobody cancel culture nope. when rappers call our women the B's and uh, the H's. None of that. When they, when they perpetuate carrying guns oh. and all this violence, doing link. Why won't they cancel culture on that? Well, you know why? Because they're watching yeah, us. They want you that way. Absolutely. They want they, to, okay. to, to like Cosby and everything else. But we have to grow higher on higher ground, like Stevie said. Higher ground, seriously. You guys are doing it. You just got to educate. You can't get detoured. You can't let that allow that. To, okay, you do that. You got to bring the truth and define. A lot of this is what you're talking about has not been defined for these young people yes. and these families. They don't know what you're talking about. They wow. hear you. You have the power, and you need to join forces and teach it. That's what you're doing. This is real education. Yes, sir. This is true education. This is, that's I, what it is. But we couldn't do this education without guys such as yourself. And I want, I want you to think about this real quick. I've watched our young men become, all of a sudden, they become the most popular guys in the world if they don't act masculine. And I've watched our masculine young men. I had a teacher, a European instructor, tell me, come, call me to a school and said, you need to talk to Jaleel. So I go up there and I'm instantly, I'm hot. What, is, what has he done? Has he been disrespectful? Oh no, he's got great grades. He's in middle school. She said, well, no, he kind of, he walks in as if he owns the place. Mm -hmm. So I said, well, wow. I'm no, listen, I'm telling y'all a true story. I'm pretty good, but I ain't that good. I can't make this up. I said, what do you mean, man? She said, well, he walks in, you know, he, his, his shoulders kind of swing and, you know, he just kind of, she said, he has an air about him. I said, well, I said, well, hold on now. So now I'm trying to get, I'm getting to the nuts and bolts of this conversation now. I said, well, what exactly do you mean? I said, has he been disrespectful to you or any student? Is he, is he interrupting class time? She said, oh no, he's a wonderful student. I said, well, let me say this to you. I said, I'm glad we're really having this conversation. I'm glad I drove 30 minutes or 20 minutes to get to Romulus. I said, well, listen to me. You blame that on me. I said, I will take the brunt of that. But I said, I'll tell you this too. That's not going to change. I said, now, if you called me and said his pants were down, mm -hmm. if you called and told me that he was disrespecting you or right. disrespecting class, I said, he and I will have a conversation and it will become physical. I said, but if you want me to tell my son to stop acting like a man and like he's supposed to act and stop walking that way, I said, I'm, I ain't going to lie to you. I really feel very good right now, and I appreciate you calling me and telling me because I realize I've done my job. You have a wonderful day. And she had a look on her face like, I can't believe this black man just said this to me. They don't want you to define yourself. That's but it. the biggest thing that you guys can do right there is you said something very important. You have these men and then you need women. You have Carlos Moran. You have these men. What our young boys need is you. And you, they're not getting the exposure because the society has changed. We're not allowed to go through the streets like we were 40 years ago. Wow. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have to use your technology. Okay. It's right here. You got to keep, no, you got to keep letting them see you in any, in, however, I don't care how you do it because I, I get confused with this streaming and all this stuff. <laughs> but they need you, Raphael. They really do. Because I'm going to say one thing. I'm gonna, this is the only time I'm going to kind of trip. When young cats see me, they're on teams, and when I toured or whatever, I get in the hood wherever I am. I was in the White House, and my brother was saying, Carl, you can't do that. I was a guest, and I was like, oh, the bloods are waiting on me, and I'm like, hey, what's up? Mm -hmm. And then they were like, I was like, Carl, you can't do that. You, you, you have to, you'll get them in trouble. I'm like, hey, what's up? What's, what's your name, Ralph? Yeah, I'm Carl. Mm -hmm. You know, and all that. Afterwards, some of them were very uncomfortable. What I was saying to them is that I'm you. Come on, me. You me. There Come you on. Go. You know, you ain't gotta be Dr. Taylor and no, no, I mean, we love each other. You might be mad at me, you think you're mad, yeah. but I go to speak, I'm sitting up on the big thing with the I was with the who's the the Surgeon General, mm -hmm. oh, right? Okay. And all the school teachers was down there from DC and Baltimore, they all black women, right? I looked over at him and was see every coop at that time. Mm -hmm. I say, uh, Dr. Coop, you don't mind dude. I ain't no disrespect, but I wanna go eat with my folks. He, well, yeah, sure, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> I got down there at the table. We eating and everything. And I said, this is some good chicken. This Negro waiter, he's just like, excuse me, this is squab. This is not. The whole table went crazy. I leaned over. I said, it's chicken to me, man. It's chicken. chicken okay. Carl, <laughs> it's don't, chicken. Yeah. Don't lose But what it. I'm saying is that it's, we cannot, that is your gift. Come on. That's not technology. You and him both have it. You just need more exposure. And you need her and others, you got to keep talking to our kids. We're not, we're letting other people talk to them. Yes, sir. We become afraid of them. You got to keep this, this podcast, yeah. this crew, 
These, these kids are not seeing this. No. This says this is what we can do. Yes, this sir. is for them. This is for them. This is That's for the them. sacrifice you're making. They need to know. Bro, well, seriously. And then you turn around and say, niggas play ball. I don't know. They get mad at me. You're not supposed to say nigga. I, I said it affects them. There you go. It's a term <laughs> yeah, of endearment yeah, for you. What I'm saying, though, uh-huh. these cats are ballers. Raphael, you can take your, oh, okay, I understand. Take it That's why all the cats, I ain't going to lie. They love me. Mm-hmm. You come in the class, I tell them, I say, you don't come in here late. And then I stood and said, come here. I said, you're not going to come in this class late, Negro. You understand? Because you're fulfilling the prophecy that we can't be on time. So, Negro, Man. you're going to be on time. You understand me? Wow. So, when they come in the class, 150, I said, come here. And I put my hand on, I said, what I tell you? I know, Doc. I said, what I tell you? I said, okay. Then. then somebody turned around, the white kids just standing up. They got after me. I said, well, he calls the kids nigger. No, I did not. I say Negro and Nubian. <laughs> you know, I, I do. I don't uh-huh. use that word. You yeah, know, of I, course. I call all the kids. Come here, little Negro. The little, uh, I love all my students. Do I love my black students? Oh, sorry. Absolutely. <laughs> Tech guy gonna shoot me. But I'm just saying, you guys are not selling yourselves That's enough. That's is. what I'm telling you. Gotcha. Yeah. Sell them. All right. Really? We appreciate gotcha. it. Yeah. Appreciate it. Man, State Champions Podcast Season on, 2 man. is going down. Come on, man. We didn't do a celebration, but we got to do a quick toast. Well, it is a celebration. We got Mine's water. Like toast. That's we got water too. I did that too. And we bring him back. We gonna take our community back. G, get this stuff out. Make sure that the people see the conversations to heal our community. Everybody, make sure you tune in. IG, follow us. Come on. Let everybody else know. State Champions Podcast. We're back season two, and we out of here, baby. We different. This Love ain't, y'all. This ain't for everybody. Peace. Yeah, peace.